All right, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, good night, whatever time you're tuning into this video, just make sure that it is good. My name is Game Boy Rob, and today is another glorious day of Beyond the Bandlewood. Today, I thought we would do another deck tech, another deep dive into a uh, into one of the decks that is pretty prevalent in the meta, at least you know in the circles that I play in, where I'm at on the on the on the leaderboard. And that deck, the deck that I thought I'd bring to you guys today is one I've actually been looking forward to. It is Zerath Zillion Time Bombs. That's right. Turns out, if you take Zillion, who has been, you know, for a while, for a long time, widely considered to be one of the worst champions, and you put him with Zerath, who people thought was going to be, like, the worst champion of Beyond the Bandlewood, if you put the two together in a deck... But uh, turns out it's actually pretty good. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a lot of cards in here that um, have been considered really bad by a lot of people for a long time. And altogether, they actually fit into a deck that performs really well, which is like mind blowing, right? So what the heck is that deck? Basically, it is a deck built around Zerath, right? The, the deck is the deck is built around making Zerath into a control tool, essentially. Zerath is, in case you're unaware, Zerath is a Shuriman champion that came out with Beyond the Bandlewood. He's a 4-mana 3-3. He says, when an allied landmark is destroyed, deal one to the weakest enemy, right? And then he levels up when you've destroyed four allied landmarks in this game. Now, this isn't the most important thing in the world, but there is a distinction here. Zerath triggers and deals one every time a, a, a landmark is destroyed for any reason but he only levels up when you destroy landmarks. So, and again, this isn't the biggest deal in the world, but if, but if, your, opponent, if your opponent Scorched Earths, uses Scorched Earth on one of your landmarks, Zerath will deal one, but he won't progress towards his level up. Just wanted to clear the air with that. Just wanted to get that out there. It doesn't really matter or anything, but that is how he works. And then, on his level 2 form, He's a 4-mana 4-4 who says, when an allied landmark is destroyed, deal 3 to the weakest enemy. And of course, he's got a level 3 for him because he is an Ascended, but we don't care about that because, like, we're not playing a Sun Disc deck, right? So that doesn't matter to us. But this is the important part right here. Level 2 Zerath says, whenever an allied landmark is, is destroyed, he deals 3 to the weakest enemy. Which is very powerful, actually, especially in the meta right now with all the very small units that are running around, right? Small to mid-sized, you know, Lulus and Poppies and and uh, Mirai Wardens and those kind of units, right? They all kind of die to Zerath if you can break your own landmarks. And the idea is that Zerath along with Roiling Sands is really strong. If you can get a level 2 Zerath on the field and get one or more Roiling Sands by playing a card like Unraveled Earth, uh, your opponent can't play any units, <laughs> right? If you have a level 2 Zerath and a Roiling Sand, when your opponent plays a unit, Zerath kills a unit. Usually the unit that just got played, right? Which is really, really powerful. I, I came down pretty hard on this guy when he was revealed. I said that he looked really disappointing. He looked really bad. I didn't see the point in playing him. And I am, I am delightedly wrong. I am very happy that I was wrong uh, in my analysis of this guy. Because this deck that he's in... It makes sense, it's kind of powerful, and I definitely understand why they didn't give him more stats. I I, I didn't understand why Zerath only had 4-4 four, four on level 2. Now that I've played with the deck a little bit and played against this deck a little bit, I get it. Uh, any more health on this guy and, uh, ooh, he'd be a little spooky. Speaking of, we aren't running pr much protection spells for Zerath. It's really just Ancient Hourglass that we have as a 2 of. If we, if we started running into a meta where people were able to kill Zerath more reliably, uh, I, we could even slot, start slotting in like stress testing as we can start, or stress defenses, I mean. We could start slotting in things like more Ancient Hourglasses, right? We could, there are protection spells that we could run for this guy, but in the meta right now, we don't really need them because no one is really trying to deal forward to Zerath in this meta right now. But I'm gonna, but I'm getting ahead of myself. What's the rest of this deck? We've got three Inventive Chemists, just because this is a 2-1 for one mana that creates a landmark. Shouldn't need to say more there. Uh, we're running three Pokey Sticks because it's a great card. Three Preservariums for our card draw. Rock Hopper, again, is a very, very important card. Anything that makes a Roiling Sand is going to be really, really strong for Zerath. We've got three uh, three copies of Zillion. 
Time Bombs, obviously, really, really good with Zerath. Um, another thing that is worth noting, Zerath will trigger his damaging ability after a landmark is done uh, being used, right? So in the case of Time Bomb, when it counts down, it deals one to everything, and, and then Zerath triggers. It's not like Zerath triggers in the middle of the Time Bomb or anything like that, right? So if your opponent has a full board full of like one health units and one 3-3, the Time Bomb will kill all the one health units and then Zerath kills the 3-3, which is just, oh, chef's kiss. Feels so good when that kind of thing goes off. And it's kind of the reason I like playing this deck is, is moments like that. We've got three copies of Endless Devout. This card is fantastic. Three mana, three, three. You know, decent body for the for the mana cost, but then it also creates a landmark that, you know, that triggers Zerath, and then this landmark also creates a 5-3 later. Ooh, this card is good, especially when combined with something like Rite of the Arcane or Desert Naturalist. Desert Naturalist, holy crap. My god, she needed... Desert Naturalist was always a card that was like kind of meh, like I can sort of see why you'd play this. But like, why would you ever purposefully destroy your own landmarks? Now that there are cards like Inventive Chemist and the Scrappy Bomb and things like Endless Devout and the Sarcophagus. Sarcophagus says Countdown 3 or when I'm destroyed, summon a Restorative Out. Which means if you destroy it on purpose, if you destroy it early, you just get the Restorative Out early. You get a 5-3 with Fearsome. What? That's crazy, right? So <laughs> Desert Naturalist. In addition to just, you know, being able to run landmark removal for stuff like, you know, Bandle Tree, if you use this on a sarcophagus, you get a 5-3 and a 2-4 and a 5-4, all for 4 mana. It's it's nuts. It's crazy. It's crazy how strong Desert Naturalist is. This is this card got so much better with Beyond the Bandlewood with all these with all these Zerath cards. Right of the, right of the Arcane is uh, one of the reasons to run this deck, one of the reasons to actually be using these destructible landmarks. Three mana slow speed, destroy an allied landmark or one of your mana gems to deal four to an enemy unit, right? This is just like the other rights. You can break your own mana gem if you want, but usually you would prefer not to. This one doesn't require sacrificing your own unit. Unlike the other ones, it, it you can only do it by destroying a landmark. And again, if you use this on something like uh, something like Endless Devout, if you use it on the Sarcophagus, the Sarcophagus still gets you the Restored Devout, so you're not losing any value, and it's just basically a 3 mana slow speed deal 4, which is very strong. This is one of the only ways to kill Vagar, to kill Senna, to kill uh, Poppy th after she's gotten a buff, or Poppy after she's gotten a Ranger's Resolve, right? 3 mana deal 4 is a really, really strong removal card, and... Most most decks honestly don't have access to a card that does that. So us being able to have access to a card that just deals four damage for three mana, it's just really really strong. Really good reason to run this card. One hidden pathways and one mini morph. I'm considering bumping up to two mini morph or taking out the hidden pathways and going to like one stress defense or maybe like a third ancient hourglass. But like for now, I think this is fine. As I as I test the deck more and refine it a little bit more, I'll decide which. Which of these things, you know, I'll decide what this last slot is. This last slot where this Hidden Pathways is, I'm not sure what it should be. For now, it's Hidden Pathways, which is fine. And then the very last card, the most the most important card, is actually the Arsenal. I know I've been talking about Zerath this whole time, because the deck is kind of built around Zerath. But Zerath is actually only the second most important card in this deck. The most important card in this deck is the Arsenal. Holy crap! My god, I completely undervalued this guy. I, I, when I saw this guy revealed, I thought he was a bit of a joke. I thought he was a bit of a meme. We're not playing eight mana units. We're playing this eight mana unit. This guy, this guy is legitimately what makes the deck good, right? Everything I've talked about so far with Zerath and all his synergies, like, they're all right. They're pretty good. But they're not enough to make a good deck. Arsenal is what rounds out the deck and makes it good enough to be competitive. This guy coming down on round eight, well, I guess I should explain what he does. He's an eight mana, eight six, right? He says, I have a random keyword for each allied landmark you've destroyed this game. Which doesn't sound like a lot. Like how many, like how many keywords is this guy gonna get, guy gonna get realistically, right? In a game, like, like five, six. If that, no, this guy usually comes down with like 
eight or nine keywords, which means he usually has every keyword. <laughs> <laughs> and he's missing like one, right? This guy's usually missing like one keyword when he when he finally pops out of the pops out of your deck and onto the field, which is completely nuts. An eight mana eight six with spell shield and elusive and lifesteal and regen and quick attack and challenger and scout ends the game. That that is a card that ends the game. <laughs> and that's what this guy is you, most of the time. This guy is completely nuts. Completely makes the deck viable. Very important card. Your opponents will be playing around it if you play this deck. Uh, let's see. One card I didn't mention very much. Hexplosive Minefield is a card that I really think is quite under... Maybe not underrated. I think people are catching on to how good this card is. But this card is really good. Being able to play this and just stun the strongest enemy unit at landmark speed. Landmark speed. Is so powerful. This just this just craps on Scion, right? If your opponent plays Scion on round seven, you just play Hexplosive Minefield, and then Scion can't attack. They're like, sorry, Scion. <laughs> and and not only that, you can set it up to do that late or er, er, later, right? Like if we play this on round five, and then you know our opponent plays Scion on round seven, we can just right of the Arcane or or Desert Naturalist or whatever, blow it up, and then it stuns him again, right? completely busted very very strong card another reason to be in this in this archetype and yeah that's the deck right there uh the last thing i should mention is that ancient hourglass does work with zareth if you put zareth into ancient hourglass you know you get the stasis statue with a zareth inside when the stasis statue counts down zareth pops out and then he sees that the stasis statue got destroyed and immediately does damage to an enemy unit which is some really strong synergy <laughs> that's some really nice synergy right there so with all that said with all that out of the way that is the deck right there i hope you guys enjoy the games to come let's see if i can see if i can show it off see if i can see if i can get some good games for you guys let's see what we can do all right all right first game we are up against draven scion So we probably are not going to keep uh, probably not any of these cards in our opening hand. Zareth, you don't really want to play Zareth in this deck until after he's leveled up, which is not very difficult, right? He only takes four landmarks before he's leveled. That being said, we don't really want to play him in the early game. We're probably not going to drop him until round five, round six, usually. So we're going to maul him. We could consider keeping Desert Naturalist, but with no... With no early drops, I think it's just a full mull. Explosive Minefield is a one drop, obviously, but it's not a card you want to play on round one. It's not a card you really want to play on round two either. So I don't think we keep that either. Endless Devout is good, but really what I was looking for here were Rock Hoppers. And, the, and this, Inventive Chemist is also very nice. Just in time. Cutting a little close there, Chemist. Little booms are just as good as big ones. I know, they're just as good as big ones, but if you had showed up just a little, just a little earlier, that might have been, that might have been nice. Alright, we're going to drop the Endless Devout, and what's fun about Endless Devout is you almost don't care about getting good trades with this guy. You kind of just want this guy to die. <laughs> like, this guy just sort of wants to die as soon as he can. So like, I would be perfectly happy with just suiciding this Endless Devout into a 3-1, but I wouldn't be very happy with taking 3 da fearsome damage from this Fallen Rider. So I'm going to attack with the 2-1 and keep the Endless Devout in the back, just because it is my only Fearsome Blocker right now. In a deck like, in a deck like uh, Draven Scion, though, it's not like they're not going to attack us, right? There are some decks, there are some matchups where Endless Devout sort of just doesn't do very much because the opponent just ignores it, and you have to, like, you attack with it every single, every single round, and they just take the damage, and then you can never get the landmark. But I don't think we're going to have that problem. I don't think we're going to have the, that problem this game. Our opponent could, like, discard Flame Chompers with, like, a Poro Cannon and attack us. That is something that our opponent could do. I think I'm going to take this moment to just write of Arcane. I 
I don't want my opponent to get a surprise seven damage on me here, so I'm just gonna gonna kill the Scrappy Bomb. Oh hey, look, they're getting a surprise six damage on me anyway. Just burning. Legion Grenade, the Reborn Grenadier on another Reborn Grenadier. That's a little unusual. But yeah, so like, we have an empty board right now, right? I have I have an empty board, I have zero units. By paying four mana. And I thought there was something good to see. By paying four hey, mana, up, I'm gonna get a 2-4, a 5-4, and a 5-3 with Fearsome. So oh. And suddenly I've got a developed board. <laughs> Just like that, my board is developed. Fantastic. I think we're even going to stun. I think we're even gonna stun this rider here. See if we can see if we can push some real damage on our opponent. See if we can really push some damage on our opponent. Or force a trade with Draven. I will accept I will accept forcing Draven to trade with us here. I'm not sure if we should be attacking with the desert naturalist here. So I won't. I thought about it. I thought about attacking with the naturalist, but I think. Yeah, he doesn't block. I think we're fine not to. <laughs> okay, lost soul. Now we're cooking. Lost soul is, or, or lost soul. Twin Blade Revenant is currently the strongest unit, right? Which means that's what's going to get stunned by the Hexplosive Minefield. So we're gonna stun that and kill Draven. Draven. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Oh, and we have, oh, and we just, oh, oh, oh. Ah, and we draw the mini morph right on time to see a scion. Oh, we're looking fantastic. Oh, I'm going to get him. Oh, we're going to get him. Oh, we're going to get him. Show me the scion. That's not a scion. Yo, scammed. Where is my scion right now? Not the greatest draws in the world. But we're not too upset. We can play this Unraveled Earth. I'm not sure what the point is. I'm not sure what the point of saving my mana is either though, so I guess we're just, I guess we're just gonna save it. I'd love to just slap down the arsenal next round. But if our opponent does have a Scion, like if they just top decked him or if they were saving him for some reason, we're probably not going to be able to play the Arsenal here. Yeah. So now I have, I have the luxury of having options, right? I could just stun Scion nice and easy with a Hexplosive Minefield, or I could mini morph him and prevent him from coming back at all. I think at the moment I would actually prefer to just stun him, because that allows me to get my Zerath down. And once Zerath comes down, that's kind of GG. We can always just mini morph Scion later anyway. <laughs> you can even play Zerath here. <laughs> even though he's got a challenger since we have this ancient hourglass, we could just Zerath anyway. So yeah, he can like, that's great and all, 
You do that. We're just gonna put him- we're just gonna put him in stasis. And when he gets back, he's just gonna kill the sump dredger. Nice. I'm gonna play an arsenal, and this guy, literally, he's gonna have like... Seven? Eight? I think it's seven. I think he's gonna have seven keywords. Spell Shield, Tough, Fury, Scout, Augment, Lifesteal, and Elusive. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's Draven time. Hi, Draven. Awesome. So, my opponent played Draven. Zareth killed Draven. Up, huh? <laughs> and there you go. That was a good first game. That was a that was ex that's exactly how the deck is supposed to function right there. We did wow. We did everything we were supposed to do. That was glorious. But yeah, that's it right there. That's the idea. That's what this deck's supposed to do. GG, let's do another. Ooh. Star Spring. That's not something you see every day. I'm not sure what to keep in this uh, in this matchup. I'm fairly certain we still keep Inventive Chemist. But other than that, I'm uh, I'm at a bit of a loss. Probably, oh uh, yeah, probably we just look for a Desert Naturalist. So this is probably a favored matchup. Simply, simply because we can break the Star Spring, right? Oh God, that's so nice. I got an idea. Soraka? Oh, no Soraka. That's okay. We're gonna get- we're gonna get down some landmarks and- and right here, like this. Lounging Blizzard. By playing- by playing two inventive chemists and a- and an Unraveled Earth, we've already leveled Zillion, right? This Scrappy Bomb is gonna go off this round. When my opponent plays another unit, the Roiling Sands will go off and then that's it. Zareth will be done. Zareth will be leveled. So Zareth is a very easy level up. I am wearing my goggles. I am wearing my goggles. I'm not sure exactly what to do about this lounging lizard. The fact that our opponent's running me, running it, really, uh, really throws me off. Really kind of scares me. So we're gonna, if he wants to keep a hold of it. He's gonna have to heal it. Not sure what to take here. We do have a hidden pathways. So we are gonna get more card draw. For now, I think we're fine. There is something to be said for, since this is my last landmark, Rite of the Arcane isn't going to be able to be used for a while. So there is something to be said for just cashing in on this Rite of the Arcane now and killing something. But I don't think we need to do that for this. I don't think we need to do that in this matchup. I don't know for sure. If you would oblige. Okay, table for one. Table for one. Pass. Oh, that is a nice time bomb. Oh, that is a heckin' good time bomb. How can I say no to that? Like, honestly? Hmm. Yes. 
I said no to that. Where there's a will, there's a meal. How did I say no to that? So, our opponent is probably going to kill Zillion here, or, well, eat, eat Zillion here. Capture! Capture Zillion here! Oh, he chooses not to. Goes for a pass. Okay, we find a Zerath. Opponent finds a Soraka. Since we have the Hourglass, I'm pretty sure we're good to just slap down Zerath. What a weird game. Yep, opponent immediately tries to eat it, which is smart. Well, let's Pokey stick him first. If he's got if he's got a a big heal or whatever, let's force that out of him first. Well, I was all excited. I was all excited to like destroy a Star Spring with Desert Naturalist, but looks like. Looks like that might not be necessary this time around. A moment in time and yeah, we're just gonna play the Preservarium as well, I think. Really any reason not to and basically the only basically what we're looking for right now is just the arsenal right basically we just need the arsenal Ooh. oh hey look the arsenal oh that's great that's exactly what i was looking for i don't ooh, i don't know if we're ready to play him right now I wish I could see. I wish I could see how many landmarks I'd played. That's the one gripe I have about this, is that you don't get to know how many keywords the arsenal's getting or what keywords they are. I'm sorry. It just... I, am I am unbound. We're gonna see if we can kill Soraka here. Adding touch. So, because Zerath always damages the weakest unit... He's always gonna be targeting Soraka, until Soraka levels up, right? When Soraka levels up, it becomes stronger than Fortune Croaker. then Zerath will stop hitting her, but until then, Soraka is always going to be targeted by Zerath. So if I do this... There should be very little our opponent can do. The only, the only way our opponent can save Soraka now is by playing another Astral Protection or, like, Double Guiding Touch, right? Double Guiding Touch on Soraka would save Soraka. No, 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 no. What is that? <laughs> what, 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 what is this? What is this? What's happening here? Bayou brunch. Get, 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 get that out of here. What are you doing? Sunblessed Vigor. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. No, that's a lot of Zeraths. Oh, this could be fun. 
All right, all right, this could be fun. We're gonna, we're gonna have two Zerads here for a minute. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, astral protection again. Okay, okay. So we lose one Zara. <laughs> okay. Okay, and our opponent can't our opponent doesn't want to do anything on this second one. He, our opponent doesn't want to play a unit because then you know whatever they play will probably die. So I think what we're gonna do now. is deal, you know, a good old seven damage to this Tom Kench here. What a shame for you! <laughs> what a shame for you! Alright, it's gonna be really hard for Tom to eat anything here, because he's at one. We're gonna, this looks like a good time to slap down our arsenal. There we are. Like, that's, a, that's a fair amount of keywords. Why wow, he actually doesn't have spell shield right now. The fact that Arsenal currently does not have spell shield is actually pretty unlucky, considering he has basically everything else. What else are we missing? We're missing impact. Spell shield. Now, Arsenal does, in fact, gain keywords as more landmarks are destroyed. So, like, right now, if my opponent were to play a unit the Roiling Sands would break, and the Arsenal would get another keyword, and it would probably be Spell Shield. But that's not necessary this time around. Observe power in its purest form. Its purest form. Nice! Now, that was a game... That was a game where our opponent didn't have Star Spring, which was quite unfortunate for them, but... As you can see, we did have triple desert naturalist in our hands so like we would have been very prepared for a star spring at any point so like Ugh. all right draven ezreal this time around draven ezreal this time around We could keep Pokey Stick. Pokey Stick doesn't hit much in this matchup. It hits Boom Baboon. I'm not sure. Just keep. I'm not sure it's worth it just to keep this around for Boom Baboon. So I'll mull it. That's better. We will open attack here. I don't think there's any reason to play Zillion before we attack, right? Ah, well, I guess we could have dealt. I guess we could have dealt three instead of dealing two, but pretty sure it's fine to to take it easy on that one. Ooh, Preservarium versus Rock Hopper. These are both pretty good. Honestly, I feel like we can. I feel like I don't have enough landmarks. Like, I have a Zerath and I have a Desert Naturalist, and I don't really have anything... Time again? Oh I don't really have anything to use them on, so I think I'm actually going to take this Preservarium. Get myself, get myself some card draw here. Do I see a Draven? Do I see a Draven on three? I don't. I do not. I do not see a Draven on three. Wow. I wish I had taken that Rock Hopper. Suddenly, suddenly, I wish I had taken the Rock Hopper. I'm considering going Minefield right now, and then playing Preservarium. And then playing, like, the Naturalist on the Minefield next round. I think I like that. 
You know, I think I think I like that. Endless Devout. On the other hand, we could play Endless Devout. I think I like that better. I think I like that better. The sooner we can get this guy down and get the sarcophagus, the better. Fantastic! Second naturalist is pretty cool. Time for the main event. The main event, huh? There's not a lot of point... I was gonna say there's not a lot of point in stunning this Revenant. And I think that's true. And I thought there was something good to see. Oh, he kills Zillion. Really? Really? It's gonna blow! Zareth is three out of four. Ooh, that's a time bomb. Ooh, that's a time bomb. In this matchup, unfortunately, Zareth is prone to dying very quickly. So I still kind of don't want to play him until... Until we get a, uh, uh, an Ancient Hourglass or something. No, and there's really no... There's really no or something. It's basically just Ancient Hourglass. So I think we're just gonna go for another naturalist. We're gonna flood the board, we're gonna stun his 4 2, we're gonna put on a ton of pressure, a ton of pressure on our opponent here. Alright, Zareth is leveled. Opponent Tri Beam and Probulators us. Avaros and Trapper is interesting. We could go for a minefield here, but I think I think it's fine to just attack. I'm pretty sure this forces a block with Draven. This is gonna hurt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that sets him up to die to Pokey Stick, which is great for us. Opponent goes down to ten. We've taken zero damage so far. Now we're cooking. Sure, kill my rock bear. Yeah, all you, dude. All you. It's free of charge. All yours. And that looks like a perfectly good time to throw down a time bomb. This twin blade is set up for a pokey stick. We don't really have a good means of getting Zerath down. And then again, then again, we kind of do. Oh no! No no no! My one counter! Oh, there goes my arsenal! Oh! You hate to see it. Yeah, you actually hate to see it. Ah, that sucks. Arsenal down! Arsenal down! Oh, that sucks. Oh, 
All right, we'll go for a pokey stick here. Draw another minefield. Man, these things are stacking up right now. If our opponent ever attacks us with this twin blade here, we are obviously going to slap it. Would you take that opportunity to slap down Zerath? Opponent chooses not to do that. So we're going to play this inventive chemist instead. And then if our opponent passes again, I think we're going to play this pathways. And go looking for another, and go looking for another arsenal. Basically, basically we're in an arsenal waiting room. Man, turns out Aloof Travelers is a pretty good card. Turns out, turns out Aloof Travelers is pretty strong. Being able to discard your opponent's highest cost card is, uh, it's pretty okay. It's pretty decent. And now that, that should trigger him. Now that I can't play Xerath, yeah, that should trigger him to go for the attack. We will pass. Opponent burns a sump dredger. Alright. Xerath will probably die here. But I don't have a better play. I expect I expect to see a very big tribeam and probulator here. That's what that's what would not surprise me. A very large tribeam and probulator is the thing that would not surprise me here. Or at least a medium-sized one. Timewinder, huh? That's interesting. That's not what I expected. Did you just discard? Discarded a lost soul? Okay. We're gonna kill the 3 4 and stun the 5 5. Opponent kills Zerath. That's fine. Worthless. Oh, opponent does not kill Zara. Wait, what? Oh, <laughs> opponent did not activate the sump fumes. <laughs> Whoops. That's not how sump fumes works. Huh. Wait. Nothing's more exciting than an unsolved mystery. I feel like it should be. Wait, I feel like that actually should be how it works. Oh man, if I played Unraveled Earth, my opponent wouldn't have been able to do that. Okay, so I guess I should have seen that my opponent was messing up, and I should have played Unraveled Earth so that the Station Archivist would have died, but like... I didn't- I didn't notice that my opponent was messing up like that. You will not hinder my progress for long. We're gonna see if we can keep pushing damage here. I'm certain. I'm certain that Zerath is going to get murdered here. Oh, I'm going to get him. But if he doesn't, we're presenting lethal. Ah, time winder number two. This one was created by Station Archivist. Okie dokie. All right, all right, you got me. But yeah, if if we ever do draw a what's it called? What's his face? The arsenal. If we ever do find ourselves a copy of the arsenal, we should be pretty good to win the game. I don't see how our opponent's gonna really deal with it. Alternatively, 
Alternatively, we could just time bomb our opponent to death. That is also a viable alternative. Just as I suspected. Just move your fat arm. Alright, 12. Going to 12. I think we can afford to go to 12. That should be acceptable. Wait. Find ourselves a mini morph. And we're ba we're just looking for arsenal. We're just looking for the arsenal. Or anything that could draw us into an arsenal would also be nice. That is not an arsenal. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. So we need to play him right quick before he gets aloof, right? Before before aloof happens. There he is. This one has spell shield. There we are. So there should be nothing our opponent can... Well, that's not true. If our opponent has a Scorched Earth plus two other spells to pop the spell shield right now, our opponent could deal, to, could deal with this. But they need to target this three times. And the third one has to be Scorched Earth. Or Ravenous Block, I suppose. Time Winder Sun Fumes. Okay. Well, unfortunately for me, it looks like he's got it. Darn. Well, that's a shame. Hi, Ezreal. Wow, we might actually lose here. It's actually it's actually very possible that we lose this game, which is pretty sad for me. We'll crack this yet. We'll crack this yet. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you will. Oh heck. Man, I wish I had a unit. Any, uh, literally any unit would be great here. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh heck, I'm actually. Yeah, I actually appear to have lost here. We have to see. We have to see what the draw is here. But he actually, he actually out managed to outvalue me. Oh, just a little late. Oh God, Zara, if you've been like one round, one turn earlier. Yep, looks like he got us. Just as I suspected. Yeah, if I mini morph here, it actually increases the amount of damage we take. Alright. GG. Opponent got us. Maybe I should have it's maybe my mistake there was I had I had the arsenal and I also had an ancient hourglass in my hand. It might be correct to wait on wait to play the arsenal until you can play the arsenal plus the ancient hourglass. However, the longer you keep arsenal in your hand, the, the more likely it is your opponent gets it out of your hand with aloof travelers. So, <laughs> so like, you know, it's a little, it's a little hard to, to decide what is proper to do there. But I think, I think that is a good showcase of what I think is ultimately the biggest weakness that this deck has. I think, I think the biggest weakness of this deck is legitimately aloof travelers. Aloof travelers is our, is our one weakness. Any, any deck that can discard the arsenal out of our hand has a pretty, has a pretty fair chance of beating us. So that's, that's how heavily we rely on 
the arsenal as a as a win condition. But yeah, so if you're looking for like matchup tables, uh, this is basically just like a pretty solid control deck with a with a late game bomb at the end, which is the arsenal. That's super hard to deal with. I don't know what this deck particularly struggles with. Maybe I don't I don't know how it does against Nami decks. I feel like that might be pretty rough. Uh, we handled that Scion earlier with ease. I don't think we can quite keep up with most rally, you know, poppy decks. I think those go under us a little too heavily. So we probably we probably lose to poppy decks. We probably don't do great against Nami decks. But our biggest weakness is really aloof travelers. Everything else we're pretty solid into, right? Any sort of puff cap deck, any sort of like Bandle Tree deck, we squash, right? Because we have we have landmark removal. But yeah, anyone who runs a loop travelers can can give us a bit of a hard time. But those that's the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed those games. Let me know if you did. Leave a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff. Let me know what decks you want me to go over in the future. And with that, I am out of here. Take care, guys. I'll see you in the next video.